The hidden adventure is here. Cam Cretaceous's new interactive special has hit the streaming platform of Netflix and is now available for you to play. We hope by now you've had time to jump in and navigate your way through Isla and Nublar like never before. The interactive format is a one-off for the series but has been carefully crafted to bring you what feels like an extended episode of the show, set between the second and third season. And it is filled with easter eggs, nods and references to all of the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies, clearly finding inspiration in all areas of the Jurassic franchise. Jack from Jurassic Outpost here to give you our list of the hidden adventure easter eggs. Before diving in, be sure to check out our review of The Hidden Adventure. We have even more Camp Cretaceous content on the way, and if we missed an easter egg in this video, then be sure to let us know down below in the comments. Let's jump in. The show opens on a close-up of Darius's eye, which fans of the greatest show ever will certainly recognize. This opening references the opening of Lost. Darius awakes inside a dinosaur's nest, the middle of a rat's nest, which is littered with items such as trash from the Jurassic World Park. Darius here finds a camcorder, which is similar to the scene in Jurassic Park 3 when the Kirby's and Co. find Ben Hildebrand's camcorder. Ben Hildebrand. Paul and I divorced over a year ago. Later in the special, the group also struggle to work the retro tech, which in itself is pretty funny. I love retro tech. In the nest, the monolophosaurs, who first appeared in the third season, make another appearance here. Once you've made it down the cliff, there is a really nice scene where the campers hide behind a log and watch a herd of Gallimimus, similar to the way Lex, Tim and Grant watch the herd in the first Jurassic Park, before it descends into chaos. <laughs> Depending on the choice you make, the Jurassic World Pteranodons attack the Gallimimus here, forcing the campers to hide. If you choose run, however, the Baryonyxes from Season 2 attack and presumably kill Darius. Our friend Mr. DNA returns you to the log. Mr. DNA, where did you come from? From your blood. Bumpy returns to this adventure and so does Camp Cretaceous itself, or what's left of it. When the campers eventually work the video camera, footage on it references Owen Grady, and we see clear footage of the Raptor Squad, taken from the same location we see Owen working from in Jurassic World. That is damn good. It is here that we are introduced to the character of Brimford, who is discussed by the people operating the camera and considered to be a threat to Jurassic World, having been stockpiling crates of food. He had been causing panic in the park, telling guests and staff that Jurassic World was a bad idea. He was labelled a security threat and clearly considered to be a bit crazy by workers at the park, much like how Malcolm had been treated by the public in The Lost World. I'm sure these workers eventually would have wished that they had listened to Brimford, considering where their video camera was found. Next up in returning locations is the Jurassic World Raptor Paddock, and Blue, Owen's Velociraptor buddy, makes an appearance here too. <laughs> Darius using audio recordings of Velociraptors barking to distract Blue is like how Dr. Grant uses the Velociraptor resonating chamber to distract the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> The adventure splits off here, with the two paths being either Main Street or Security, meaning the tunnels. On Main Street, there are a few things we notice here, including Lex's cap from Jurassic Park, and Ben finds binoculars that look very similar to the night vision goggles that Tim finds in Jurassic Park. The campers have visited Main Street before, earlier in Season 2, and here the T-Rex appears just like it does in that season. It also appears to enter through the gates of the T-Rex Kingdom, which is the Jurassic World designated habitat for that very dinosaur. While at the Mosasaur Arena we see the Mosasaurus, and in the background we can see the Jurassic World Hotel and a number of other buildings. Kenji says, She probably didn't want to be near, you know. Which is funny because of how the T-Rex last left things with the Mosasaurus. 
The Insider's Guide to Jurassic World book that Sammy finds shows a map of the island that shows the Mosasaurus Arena being located in the center of the island, just like the original Nublar and Jurassic World map showed before the retcon in Fallen Kingdom. It also includes information on the hidden adventure, revealing that it is in fact an amusement park. The book also reveals that Hal Brimford, the designer behind the amusement park, was good friends with Jurassic Park's founder John Hammond. Oh, John, that hurt. The hidden adventure was supposed to open to guests in 2015, but Brimford supposedly, similarly to Ian Malcolm, knew that nature could not be contained in this way, so instead prepared for the inevitable disaster. When Brooklyn opens these doors in the tunnels, the eye shine you see appears to be referring to the Trodons in Jurassic Park the game, who give a similar creepy appearance when seen in the dark. The compies chewing wires here are the same compies we see at the end of the second season, which ultimately causes the E750 to break out. This gives us a better understanding of the Hidden Adventure timeline. During the compie attack, the music, which has been great throughout, features squeaking woodwind instruments that are very much like the score moments from The Lost World. Next up, when the campers are discussing whether or not to sneak past the Sinoceratops, Ben mentions how the roars of Toro still haunt his dreams. Toro is the Carnotaurus from the earlier seasons of the show, which, on the Hidden Adventure timeline, has just suffered two attacks from the campers. The first, a flaming fireball explosion causing skin melt and flesh burn. The second, being pushed off the cliff by Ben and Bumpy. The Sinoceratops was last seen by the campers technically in Hap's tent in season 2. It's seen a number of times throughout Camp Cretaceous and was the animal that Sammy procured DNA from in the first season. If you choose to retrace your steps then you will hit a dead end and Toro will get his much deserved revenge. Uh -oh. But going forward leads you past the Sinoceratops just before Toro appears and battles the startled herbivore, a foreshadowing perhaps to the fight these two species have in Fallen Kingdom. The campers make it away before spotting a map of Isla Nublar. The gyrospheres make a return here, a park vehicle introduced in Jurassic World and driven by the campers in the first season. This scene is paired with the appearance of both the Apatosaurus, first introduced in Jurassic World, and the Brachiosaurus, first introduced in Jurassic Park. This is a great moment, and also reminiscent of the Jurassic World gyrosphere scene with Zack and Grey. The new herbivore is revealed and is indeed the Tarbosaurus. It causes a stampede similar to the one we've seen before in Jurassic World. Depending on the path you have taken, you next arrive at the Hidden Adventure Gates. The Hidden Adventure Gates themselves evoking similar visuals to both the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, and Camp Cretaceous Gates. Welcome to Camp Cretaceous. While Mr. DNA appears and helps guide you through the entire adventure, he's also spotted in numerous advertisements inside the amusement park. On the wall as you enter, we see Pardon Our Dino Dust, which does feel like a reference to something, but we couldn't quite pinpoint that one. Maybe something to do with the parks? Gotta respect cheesy theme park humor. The Dilophosaurus statue here is a reference to the very species, which first appeared in Jurassic Park for a short scene with Dennis Nedry, and appeared in the fourth and fifth seasons of Camp Cretaceous. It also shows up in Dominion. What's your story? Ah! The Dilophosaurus statue spits water, much like the animatronics do on the rides at the Universal Studios parks. If you select Dino Behavior, Brooklyn and Darius scoff when the infographic mentions the safety of the guests being the number one priority, which is ironic considering the very position the campers have found themselves in. Making sure not to leave kids on the island. The roller coaster itself is similar to both the coaster in Jurassic Park the game and the Velocicoaster at the Orlando Park. After the thrilling roller coaster sequence, there is a deep cut reference to Jurassic Park when the gang try to exit the ride. Brooklyn and Ben force the ride restraints up, allowing them to exit, like Grant, Sattler, and Malcolm do in Jurassic Park. Sammy shouts, You can't do that! Can they do that? Just like Donald Gennaro does. Can't do that. What? Can they do that? 
When trying to enter the hidden bunker, you are presented with three options, 2005, 2015, and 2974. 2005 is the year the park opened, 2015 is the year the park broke down and the year the hidden adventure was supposed to open, and 2974 is the year Jurassic Space 11 comes out. We made up this one. We made it up. Entering the bunker provides a wealth of eggs for us to digest. Imme immediately we see a poster on the wall showing the visitor center from 93's Jurassic Park. The bunker contains a bunch of cool stuff, including the Jurassic Park 3 resonating chamber, which was also seen in the Jurassic World video game that Darius was playing in the very first season of the show. Dinosaur statues similar to the ones in Darius's bedroom also appear, including a Mosasaurus. An original Jurassic Park Isla Nublar map showing Mr. DNA and a T-Rex is seen on the wall. There are a bunch of cool references in here, along with the poster for the Camp Cretaceous, Jurassic World, or Jurassic Park Gates, one of the three, and a cool piece of artwork showing a T-Rex and a Dimorphodon. Yasmina even picks up the God Creates Dinosaurs book written by Ian Malcolm. This book was written in the universe of Jurassic Park after the events in 1993, and the book is referenced in The Lost World, Jurassic Park 3, Did you read Malcolm's book? and seen in Jurassic World. The campers get comfortable in the bunker, which was Brimford's bunker and intended for Owen Grady. A video message also intended for Owen plays on the screen. Brimford talks about how the island belongs to the dinosaurs, that it's their fault, referring to the Jurassic World scientists. And we have no one to blame but ourselves for giving them abilities they shouldn't possess. Directly referencing the Indominus Rex and likely more monstrosities that were kept behind the scenes. Brimford, addressing Owen, says, You'll make it off this island, I know you will. You're smart and pure of heart. Foreshadowing the future events we see in the Jurassic World trilogy and the eventual future of the campers. The campers enjoying the stockpiled food is similar to Tim and Lex enjoying the oversized buffet in Jurassic Park. Once you reach the bunker, the adventure is complete, and at the end you'll be offered, by Mr. DNA himself, to go back and play the section you did not play. We played the roller coaster first, so we went back and played the car getaway. In the car getaway, the campers enter a new vehicle, which has Jurassic World markings. The vehicle appears to be the same as Mattel's new vehicle playset. The car getaway is kind of a ride. Sorry, it's kind of a ride. It is a self-driving vehicle adventure just like Jurassic Park's Tour Explorer vehicles, which ran on an electric trackway through the park. The vehicle also features auto-locking features, something Muldoon would have eventually wanted in the original park. How many times we needed locking mechanisms on the vehicle Stop doors? The ride, the ride features animatronic dinosaurs just like real-life rides, including those at the Universal Studios parks. The first appearance is from an animatronic Ceratosaurus, a dinosaur that is no stranger to the franchise, having appeared in Jurassic Park 3 and even in Camp Cretaceous. That dino definitely Serrata saw us. Mr. DNA's silly little pun is similar to Tim's joke in Jurassic Park. What do you call a blind dinosaur? I don't know. What do you call a blind dinosaur? Do you think he saw us? <laughs> At one point during the ride, the vehicle comes to a stop, with Mr. DNA pretending there is engine trouble. While executed slightly differently, the Jurassic Park River Ride at Universal Studios originally begins with a detour, with something having gone wrong. The situations are similar, something always has to go wrong. The Baryonyx also appears as an animatronic, first seen in the franchise in 2018's Fallen Kingdom. When the Tarbosaurus appears, however, this one is not an animatronic and surprises the campers, similarly to Amanda Kirby getting punked by the Velociraptor in Jurassic Park 3. The Tarbosaurus chases the Jeep, just like the T-Rex does in Jurassic Park, and Ben even shouts, Must go faster. Must go faster! The Tarbo tries to smash the moving vehicle, like the T-Rex does to the bus in San Diego. The Tarbo's clicking is similar to the sounds the Indominus Rex makes. And 
the animatronics distracting the dinosaurs is like the holograms distracting the raptor in Jurassic World, the hologram Rex distracting the Rex in Season 2, and even like this concept art from Jurassic World showing the Indominus Rex destroying a T-Rex animatronic. Ben uses 93 classic looking binoculars to find the exit, which is a sign in the same style seen at the 93 park, the same sign design that Dennis Nedry drives into. While the T-Rex and the Tarbosaurus battle it out, we see large spikes and bones in the grounds being used as decoration for the hidden adventure. These are similar in style to the path that leads towards the village in the Lost World. And while evading the Tarbosaurus, Darius hides behind a counter. The Tarbo peers its head around, reminding us of the Velociraptor and Tim in Jurassic Park. And that appears to be all of the Easter eggs, nods, and references that we found in the Hidden Adventure. Woo! That smells worse than Darius. Did you spot many of these on your first playthrough, and were you surprised by any of the eggs on our list? And which ones have we missed? Be sure to share your thoughts down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. We've got more Jurassic videos on the way.